So as we've been reporting, former Vice President Mike Pence testified before a grand jury for more than seven hours yesterday. He's a key witness in a special counsel's investigation into the January 6th insurrection and former President Trump's attempts to overturn the 2020 election. So we want to bring in Ashley Etienne and Leslie Sanchez to talk a little bit more about this. Ashley is a CBS News political contributor and a former communications director for Vice President Kamala Harris. And of course, Leslie is a CBS News political analyst and Republican strategist. Thanks so much um, for joining us. So Le Leslie, I'm going to start with you. Uh, of course, we have no idea. I'm looking at his wrong camera. We have no idea what Mike uh, <laughs> what Mike Pence said, um, but we know that he spoke for, for seven hours I, and we know that there's a good possibility that he may be throwing his hat into the ring uh, to run in 2024. What sort of impact could his testimony have on his race? It, he's really walking a tight uh, political rope in terms of how he's going to balance looking and sounding loyal to the former president and the base of Republicans who still continue to support the, pre the former president and trying to find his own political lane for a future national campaign. It's a really difficult one. And you can see the president has vacillated back and forth. Uh, some disclosures he had in his book and on his book tour, uh, some people are alluding to what he possibly could have uh, you know, unfolded and revealed during his seven hour testimony. And the truth is we just don't know. I will tell you politically, when you ask about this to folks in focus groups on the, on the ground, primary voters, uh, they do like this constitutional conservative uh, Pence uh, as somebody who's a, a leader of the party, but that style that he has is not really gravitating in the way that, that he doesn't have the pull the way uh, former President Donald Trump does. So I feel this is only going to add uh, to the difficulty in finding his own political lane. Interesting. And Ashley, I want to bring up something that popped up uh, earlier this week. White House Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, she didn't make it clear if President Biden would serve all four years if reelected. Let's listen first. I'm not I'm just not going to get ahead of the president. That's something for him to decide. I'm just not going to get ahead of it. And we're there's a 2024 uh, campaign. Anything related to that, I would refer you to that. Well, she later clarified on Twitter that he would indeed serve a full term if reelected. Uh, were there any repercussions from this? What were the effects of, of that statement? Yeah, no doubt that Republicans are going to try to use that clip to their advantage. You can imagine it running over and over in political ads leading up to the election. But here's the deal. You know, I hate to quote uh, Aaliyah, but like age is nothing but a number. I've worked for the president and I've seen him up close and he's incredibly sharp, incredibly engaged and knowledgeable and bringing to bear his 40 years in political uh, office every day to the job. So I have full confidence in him that he's going to run. I think, you know, he's prepared to do that. He's communicated that. He's rallied the entire team around it. I was just yesterday with the campaign team talking through strategy. And it's clear that they're, um, you know, that they're starting to put the pieces in place to really launch a really robust um, effort. In fact, you know, they said they're not leaving Florida behind. I mean, some of these states that the president didn't play in before, he's aggressively going to start to play in some of those states as well. So, you know, I think there's no doubt that he's going to stay uh, the entire term. He's committed. He's engaged. But the Republicans are going to continue to use his age against him. But again, I think, you know, if that's all you've got, that's a weak case. So, Leslie, is that the case, what Ashley said, that Republican candidates will use this uh, against him? I think right now, the old, I mean, I know there's still a lot of people, uh, candidates that have to still sort of declare, but Nikki Haley is pretty much the only one that I think has sort of coyly ventured into that area. Um, is this a good play for Republican candidates to bring up the president's age? I don't know if, Anne-Marie, the question is if it's a good place, as if it is the issue that is top of mind to many voters. Mm. Regardless of your political identity, you can't look at the candidates and look at the top of the ticket and think, is this the best we have in terms of national leadership at a really critical time? You have the rising threats, rising Russian aggression. You've got numerous economic and domestic issues that need addressing. And is this the president for the moment? And I think that's really where people are scratching their head. They're going to wait and see where this field comes out. But age will definitely be an issue and, and likely, as we know, on both sides of the aisle. Ashley, I one thing? Oh, yes, Ashley. Yeah. yeah, I was talking to the campaign yesterday. And they made a really exceptional point, which is that um, the president's policies are much more aligned with the younger generation. 
So even though he's his age is 80 years old, his policies are reflecting the sentiments and the mood of even a younger generation. So they think that that's going to work very well for them. Contrast that with the culture wars that you're getting from the Republican Party. Ashley, another topic that has been uh, top of mind for many Republicans are prioritizing laws restricting the rights of transgender people right now across the country. What sort of opening does that create for Democrats here? No, I think it gets back to my my previous point. You know, these culture wars that are being perpetuated by the Republican Party are only playing to uh, Biden's strengths and really playing into his hands. It's enabling him to really draw this contrast. You know, his point is, you know, we're into, you know, we're about freedoms and, and ensuring freedoms and expanding freedoms for all people. On the other hand, you've got the Republican Party that's really sort of isolating, marginalizing, and demonizing individuals. So I think these type of efforts will only serve to to uh, strengthen and mobilize and galvanize the Democratic base and continue to further marginalize and alienate moderate Republicans. Ashley and Leslie, thank you both for joining us. Thank you.